also want to talk about the, the photograph you took in Iceland of the Aurora Borealis. I don't know if that's how you say it, but yeah, it is. Yeah, uh, that, that photograph is absolutely incredible. Like I, I've seen images of, of those before, but um, can, can you go over like what you felt? I've never seen it personally, but what you, what you felt inside, like when you saw that for the first time? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, the Aurora, oh man, that was such an incredible experience. Um, I I was out there in Iceland with my girlfriend, now my fiance, and uh, you know we were out there for some some work related stuff, believe it or not, because I was photographing some assignments out there. But anyway, um, yeah, we were out there for a week, and on like the second night I was assigned, I I was shooting tours. That was what I was doing out there. So I was photographing tours for TripAdvisor. Mm -hmm. And on the second night we went out or I went out on this. No, we both went out on this tour and uh, the tour is to see the Northern Lights. Um, And it was like cloudy and pretty not great weather for the whole night. And then at the very end of the night, it just kind of cleared up a little bit and we caught a little bit of glimpse of green from the Northern yeah. Lights. Um, so we we're like, oh, wow, you know, that's cool. The Northern Lights, that was our first time seeing it. And, and don't get me wrong, it was breathtaking, but at the same time, it wasn't like, like, oh, wow, or anything. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, you know, as the days go by during that week, we're like checking every night to see if the Aurora is going to be out. And it's just cloudy, cloudy, cloudy. Iceland is just notoriously cloudy all the time. Uh-huh. Um, so you really need to get lucky. And then on top of that, you don't even, you don't also only need it to be clear, but you need the Aurora to be strong that particular night. Yeah. So for whatever reason, uh, I can still consider it like the luckiest like thing I've ever seen (laughs) is the stars aligned literally. And, Uh um, it was clear and they were calling for a really strong Aurora on our last night in Iceland. I kid you not. It was like, it was like, you know, scripted or something. So anyway, um, we're driving to our Airbnb in Iceland and it's, I don't know, right before sunset or like just mm-hmm. after sunset, I think. And my girlfriend goes, babe, I think I see the Northern Lights. I'm like, no, no you don't. Like, it's, that's, There's no way. it's not even dark yet. Like, you can't see the Northern Lights. And she's like, no, seriously, like, I see them. And I look up as I'm driving. I'm like trying to like take a look up from the wheel as the road. And uh, sure enough, there's like this like kind of like wispy looking thing. And I'm like, that's just, that's gotta be just a cloud. Like you're tripping. Like (laughs) it's not the Northern Lights. And then like, she's like, no, seriously, look. And I'm like looking and this cloud is like moving. And I'm like, wait, what? You know, like (laughs) I couldn't believe it. Um, And sure enough, it was the Northern Lights. And they were so powerful that night that, yeah, you could see them before it was completely dark. Damn. And then once it got dark, it was just like <laughs> mind <Yeah>. blown. <laughs> the entire sky, like all overhead was lit up in green. And that's crazy. The The coolest thing about the Aurora that I don't think photographs ever really encapsulate is it's dancing and moving constantly, like many times yeah. per second. It's like, it's like, I don't know, like, like the ocean, you know, it's just con- constantly in motion. Um, but that's the sky. And it's almost like so much so that it's a little discomforting <laughs> to see it at first. You're like, yeah, uh, cause you've never seen it. And then now it's yeah. here. <laughs> like I knew what to expect and it still was like, okay, this is freaking me out a little bit. Like seeing yeah. the whole sky move, you know, it's just <laughs> very surreal. Yeah. Um, but it was just absolutely incredible. And, um, and yeah, anyway, I didn't sleep much that night, even <laughs> though we had this incredible Airbnb for our last night. And um, I was like, screw it. I'm going to stay up till <laughs> four in the morning because it's my last night in Iceland. I don't know yeah. when I'll be back, let alone to see the Northern yeah. Lights. And to have like that perfect day to, for it to happen. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So it was, just, you know, kind of really, really lucky moment. Yeah. Uh, I think if you're, if you do something long enough, like I've been doing photography for so long over 15 years now, Mm -hmm. um, you're bound to just get lucky one of those times. And I think that was probably my lucky Um, moment. (laughs) So yeah, thank you for the compliment on the Aurora photo, but it was honestly a lot of just good timing. Yeah. So (laughs) 
That, that's that's great to hear. And mm-hmm. d- do you know the the science behind it, like how it all happens? Or, or can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, a lot of people don't realize that the aurora, um, whether it's the northern lights or the southern lights, because it happens on either side mm-hmm. of the, um, <clears throat> it's caused by the sun. Oh, okay. um, so basically, the sun is ejecting hot gas gases and plasma all the time. And sometimes that that plasma escapes the sun's gravitational pull mm-hmm. and, you know, it escapes into space. And sometimes it just so happens that that gets hurtled towards us here on Earth. Um, mm-hmm. So on Earth, we have something we have. Basically, we have a force field around our planet known as <laughs> yeah. the, the magnetosphere. Um, and the magnetosphere protects us from all these really dangerous radioactive uh, things coming off from the sun. Because <clears throat> mm-hmm. if we didn't have the magnetosphere, we would be toast. All our yeah. electronics would be fried. Like the radi- radiation from the sun is just insane. Yeah. Um, but the magnetosphere protects us. But it's weakest at the north and south pole. Mm. And that is generally why... You know, the sun's interacting with the magnetosphere and it's it's kind of breaking through with the magnetosphere (laughs) and it's exciting all these particles up in the upper atmosphere. And that is what causes the aurora. So it's basically sun's radioactive material interacting with like charged particles up in the the atmosphere Mm -hmm. and lighting them up. So that's what it is. Okay. Like Mm -hmm. leaked leaked radiation from the sun kind of mixing in with the earth. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, in a nutshell. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the gist. So it's kind of crazy. You know, a lot of people don't realize like, oh, yeah, it's really stuff that would normally kill us um, <laughs> if we were exposed to it long enough. But it's, you know, our magnetosphere saving the day. So, yeah, that's really cool. But, yeah, it's just weakest at the poles, which is why the, the aurora happens there. So, yeah, I hope mm-hmm. I could one day see it, too. Like maybe in the future, I, I'll, I'll, once this COVID and everything clears up, we could travel again and yeah yeah yeah. i know i'm 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 like damn i need to see that again it was just (laughs) incredible like i want everyone i know to see it too you know it's just it's just absolutely unbelievable when you're Mm -hmm. when you're out there underneath it but yeah iceland is a great place to go um alaska is a great place to see it even parts of canada you know it's anywhere in the north and south of the earth you could see it. yeah yeah Yeah. so you can see it like down in new zealand for example too and that's Mm -hmm. called the aurora australis not borealis but australis like australia australis Mm -hmm. and uh yeah those are the southern lights so 